For 14 centuries since the inception of Islam, a global holy war has been waging over women under Islamic law and how those laws have been astonishingly twisted. You have to understand that these are not Islamic issues. Obviously, when you have 50% of the population are women, certainly a, a nation needs the participation of all its citizens. Like other religions, Muslims practice their faith based on their interpretation of the Quran. In most Muslim nations, it works. If you look at Turkey, you would see a woman is able to rise to be the leader of the nation. Afghanistan, for example, they have a very different interpretation of what Islamic law is. And it's um, got to do with the rural areas. It's got to do with um, uh, a lack of education, a lack of understanding Islam. It's these rural regions of the world where millions of women are treated like property. The World Economic Forum says nine of the ten nations with the least human rights for women are Muslim-majority nations. The UN says since 1989, more than 120 million women have been tortured, mostly in Islamic Africa, by female genital mutilation, or FGM. Certain people want, to want religion as a political system. And when you mix religion with politics, you can end up with a disastrous situation. Equal rights between men and women is essential to the development of the Muslim world. Nawash says listening to the loudest voices all the time is very dangerous because in many cases, the loudest voices belong to the extremists. And that's the monumental challenge. It's only Muslims can make a difference to their own society. To retake the loudest voice. We don't respect you. You don't have support. You don't represent us. You're the criminal. We want to make sure they, they know that. So if anyone could be influenced by such ideology, they'll know that, hey, you will never find any applause from us by doing killing in the name of our...